Now you're probably thinking, oh my god, Hippio, no, stop, please don't ruin the keyboard, ah. But we'll get into that later. Howdy, hey, Hippio Tech here. And I previously made the quietest keyboard. And <clears throat> uh, definitely lost to switch and click because they made the loudest keyboard. Oh god, no. Yeah, I'm gonna give this to Betty. Sorry. But I'm not a sore loser. I've never been a sore loser, no. Instead of making a quiet keyboard again, I've decided to make the loudest keyboard possible. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking Betty's already done two or three videos on this. Yeah, fine. They were great and you should watch them. However, I'm doing my own take on it without a screw. One singular screw. Oh, the humanity. In order to do this, I'm gonna be taking the Keychron Q1 and turning it into a monstrosity. I'm sorry, Keychron. Well, I mean, it looks pretty, but oh, it's sure not gonna sound pretty. Let's just say we're gonna get a little bit destructive this video. Speaking of destruction, you've absolutely destroyed my heart because 73% of you aren't subscribed. If you want to repair my heart and make it the loudest heart ever, then click the subscribe button right now. It's free. Anyways, in order to build the loudest keyboard, I needed the keyboard. Yeah, in this case, I decided to use the Keychron Q1, and I'm sorry, Keychron. This was sent to me for free for review, but I don't think they had this in mind. Now, the Keychron is one of those boards that got made fun of a lot for being very pingy, and <laughs> I'm gonna be playing on that strength a little bit, but we'll get into that more pretty soon here. The Keychron Q1 is a 75% keyboard. It's aluminum. It's like a GMMK Pro competitor, but uh, they both have their quirks. But this one does win my heart because they sent me a Hippio Tech badge. That's pretty cool. This is a gasket mounted board, meaning that there's foam that keeps the plate in place rather than being secured by screws or anything like that. But uh, we'll visit those gaskets again soon. But yeah, here's the Keychron Q1. It's a 75%. It's got a separated right arrow cluster. It's made out of aluminium. But the aluminium is going to be the thing that we exploit here the most. As far as why I went with the 75% over something like a 65%, I figure more case means more room for reverberations. I also didn't have any TKLs or full-size boards that would kind of fit the bill because they were just too good. Now, now, I'm not saying the Keychron is a bad board, it's just a board that requires a lot of modding to reach enthusiast standards. This could be happy fun times, and it is a part of the hobby that I find to be really fun. I did try a couple different cases though, like the Idabout ID87 V2 almost fit the bill, but it wasn't quite hollow enough, wasn't quite loud enough. I found that the polycarbonate bottom just made it a little bit too muted, and I wasn't going to get the type of sound that I was looking for out of it without substantial modding. Just listen to this. So, Bad Seed Tech said it best when he said that this keyboard sounds like a blacksmith's anvil. I'm not a materials or acoustic specialist, I'm just a guy that builds keyboards. But yeah, that there's something up here. This board came with Keychron red switches and screw and stabilizers that were actually pre-lubed pretty well. We'll mess those up a little bit, but not too much. But I will say these switches were way too good for this board. Like, I'm actually quite fond of those Keychron switches. But now it's time to start modding the keyboard to get the desired results that we're looking for. In this case, I use my WoW stick, WoW, link in description, to get all the screws out of the case. After getting all those screws, you know what time it is, it's time to take the Oh, why is this not coming out? What the, what's going on here? Well, I'll figure that out later. It's time to take the foam out. Ew, foam? We don't want foam here. So this keyboard came with case foam pre-installed. And we don't really want that. We want to accentuate the hollowness. We want this board to sound as pingy as a League of Legends game across the United States. But let me just remove this. Oh, oh, oh no. Let's give it a quick listen now, see how it is. So as you see, this just sounds like a keyboard that's not that great. So let's just go ahead and, why does this keycap not remove? This design is bad, no offense. Sure, maybe I'm dumb, but it's hard to take off, all right? So as I mentioned before, we're just gonna revisit this, undo this little ribbon cable, unscrew these screws, and free the plate and PCB from the case. After taking this out, it'll make it a lot easier to remove those keycaps, and we'll get these switches out. These switches are too good, and we're not looking for a keyboard sound, we're looking for a loud keyboard sound. Also, please don't drop your PCB, that's a really bad idea. Even for magic, don't do it. With the bottom foam out, the keycaps off, and the switches off, it's time to access the PCB foam. I'm not sure how much this was actually doing for the build, but you know what? It's foam, it's dampening our sounds, we're gonna remove this bad boy and get it out of here too. Yeah, okay, bye. Also in the process, a stabilizer wire came out of my stabilizers, which was kind of sus. 
but I guess, hey, it'll make the stabilizer sound worse, so that's kind of good. Uh, here's another clip of me throwing away the foam for some ungodly reason. I felt like it was worth including. Yeah. Okay, with the plate foam out, we're ready to get loud. Right after I do a little ad read from our sponsor, Surfshark. Okay, you know the drill. If you stay to the end of this, you get an extra howdy hey. If you didn't already know, Surfshark is a VPN. I've tried it out myself, and I can say it's fast, very easy to set up, and it has a ton of features. Now, if content you like is region locked, then you can use Surfshark to access that. That's pretty cool. Here's an example. Ooh, I'm Swedish now and I can watch Lord of the Rings. But hey, VPNs also help you secure your data. And guess what? Surfshark is available on basically every platform. You can get it on a fire stick. With their 30 day money back guarantee, you've got literally nothing to lose. And if you click that link down in the description and use code HIPPIO, you'll save 83% and get three months for free. So make sure you do that. Why is it 83%? Because you guys made fun of me for only offering a 3% discount on Delight, so I gave you 80% more. Yeehaw, freaking go get them. I, yeah, there you go, go get them. For those of you that sat through that ad break, howdy hey, thanks for doing that. For those of you that didn't, shame on you, you better subscribe to make amends. Thank you. With the board taken apart, we have to ask the question, how am I gonna make this the loudest keyboard ever? I know, we're six minutes into the video, and I'm just now asking that question, I'm sorry. The secret is the switches and well everything it's it's a build the the keyboard is the sum of all of its part but the switches are box jades yeah you some of you probably guessed that already now you're probably thinking hip yo this is a switch what's so special about this switch well great question viewer that's such a wonderful question keep doing that box jades are a switch with a click bar famously known as thick clicks uh for those of you that don't know what thick is it's like thock but different these switches use a click bar what is a click bar, you might ask? Well, we're getting to that. Just, just stop asking questions. Oh my gosh. Some of you have probably heard of clicky switches, like Cherry MX Blues, but these function a little bit differently. Now, Cherry MX Blues tend to get a bit cold, so they use a click jacket, and this uses a click bar. The click bar is that little metal thingy, and it gets clicked down and up when you press the switch. This gives you a record-breaking two clicks per press. Yeah, that's revolutionary. That's more than one. Check this out. So, just one switch is not enough though. I'm gonna have to use at least 80 of them. And then maybe we'll have a loud keyboard. Or at least a keyboard that makes louder sounds than a linear keyboard. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. You're probably thinking I should be using the blue bomb switches that I've used in my previous loudest switch in the world video. I actually did some comparisons and they weren't anywhere near as loud as box shades. So yeah, they're definitely more annoying, but we're going for loud here, not necessarily annoying. Otherwise, you know what we would do. One singular screw. Oh, the humanity. I'm sorry, Betty. It's it's a meme. It's a meme. Okay, with our switches installed, you know what time it is. It's keycap time. Well, it would have been switch b-roll time, but I forgot to film that, so now it's keycap time. But look, they're up in the corner. They're having fun. So for keycaps, I had quite a few options. I could go with the cheapest keycap possible, which would just sound annoying. Or I could go with MT3 profile, which is a taller profile keycap. I had a specific method here, and the method was make the keyboard sound as hollow and reverbery, re, re, reverby? Reverby. As possible. Now these keycaps are tall, thick, and loud. Huh, just like me. Now they're not quite as good as SA profile, but I did not have any SA profile keycaps on hand. And I really don't like SA profile, so I wasn't about to go buy some just for this meme. They are much too tall and they hurt my wrists. But these'll do just about as well. I mean, look at them. They're almost double the height of Cherry Profile. As you can see here, they're next to GMK Future Funk. Well, okay, these are the Iron Man ones, but they're the same exact keycap. All right. These are the Black Panther MT3s, and they were sent to me by drop.com for free. If you want to buy some for yourself, you can check them out at the link down in the description. And just like that, we have a stealthy keyboard. Now, I've made a deceivingly beautiful keyboard here. Like, this looks very, very stealthy, very, very sick. I will say though, if you're not building a meme keyboard and you're going to use the Keychron Q1, do not get MT3 profile keycaps as I encountered some bad issues here. This could have been with how I put the case back together, but the keycaps stick. This will make it delightfully more annoying, but also pretty bad. I don't know if this is because it's like a prototype Keychron Q1 that I got, but I was pretty sure it wasn't a prototype. I'm not sure though. But anyways, I thought I had the build completed, but in reality, I had another idea up my sleeve. After showing this board off to a couple of different people, I got a brilliant idea. But I'm gonna save that brilliant idea for after this tiny little sound test that I'm gonna give you. Yeah, my god, it sounds pretty awful. But 
we can do worse. You're probably thinking, Hippio, how do we do worse than that? Well, let me just take her apart and take a gander at these squishy little gaskets here. Now, originally, I was gonna save these guys because I was like, ah, I could actually turn this keyboard into a good keyboard in the future, and it would be a shame to ruin them. But then I was like, the memes will be good if you rip them off. So I'm sorry to Keychron and any hopes of this keyboard ever sounding good or feeling good ever again. These gaskets are the one thing dampening some of the sound from getting to the case, and it also makes the board feel pretty decent to type on, even when it sounds awful. So let's be real, we can't have that. That would be absolutely ridiculous. So we tore them all out. From looking at the outside, it looks like the same board, but on the inside, oh, it feels and sounds so much worse. Now, this definitely wasn't my first idea for this build, and I had the idea of putting a speaker in the keyboard and making it play my new mixtape, which by the way, I released music and you can see it at the link down in the description. But I was like, eh, we'll save that one for later. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Betty also tried something with solenoids and that didn't quite work. And I've got some other ideas for building an even louder keyboard in the future. So if you're looking for something like that, make sure you get subscribed. Anyways, I'll be leaving you with the sound test. Make sure you watch the whole thing to support my YouTube algorithm overlords. Otherwise, they won't let me eat. Like, seriously, just leave it running. Anyways, a special thank you to I wreak havoc, Elusive Salvation, Night Stalker, Mr. Man, Joseph Krang, Rosie Ray, and Aquarius Keyboards for hitting that join button down below. Bye.